It's obvious that you listen to this show to hear about and support other people's dreams. But what about yours? What is your dream project? I'm here to help you break through whatever is in the way of your dreams and get you to the finish line. Go to dreamingbigcoaching.com today and take the first step. Literally, it's a button you can click to sign up for a free consultation with me. Let's find out if I can help you reach your goal. Click on Take the First Step. It's that simple to start the rest of your life. Get coached by Rob Southgate at dreamingbigcoaching.com. Welcome back to Go Fund This, the podcast where you find out about the coolest crowdfunding campaigns out there that you definitely want to know about. I'm your host, Rob Southgate, and today I am joined by W.M. Akers to talk about the Kickstarter for his TTRPG, Dead Ball, Masters of the Game. W.M., thank you so much for being on. Uh, I, I'm excited to talk to you. It's funny. I've, I've got something i got to say. I usually just jump right in and say, tell me about yourself. But today, for the listener, we're talking about Dead Ball, Masters of the Game. It's on Kickstarter. Uh it's got a, a goal. Oh, yes, there's the picture of it. For those of you listening, just imagine it. Uh, <laughs> you wanted $500. That was your goal. Are you going to make it? Yes, you're at 11456 <laughs> Uh, You've got 15 days to go, so there's plenty of time for people to get in, get the game. That's really what you're doing now, and and I'm, I'm a broken record about this, about two things. One is all the links will be in the show notes, okay, so that makes it easy. Uh, but you can go look up Dead Ball on Kickstarter. It comes right up. The other thing is, it doesn't matter if Will has hit his goal on this. Your supporting this is not only getting you a cool product, but it's fueling the next project. It's keeping him going in Dead Ball and whatever else he's doing as an author or whatever it is. <laughs> it keeps that train moving. So you want to make sure you're donating, that you're coming in, grabbing a game. It's awesome, by the way. Uh, and that you're telling your friends about it, especially this. It's baseball. People love baseball. Even people that don't like sports like baseball. And I love games. This is just a fun freaking game. So, all right, enough about me. It was about you, but <laughs> well, why don't you tell people who you are, what you do? Yeah, so my name's W.M. Akers. People call me Will because W.M. is kind of a mouthful. Um, and I'm a novelist. I'm a game designer. Um, I'm an editor. And uh, in addition to writing fiction, I've been publishing these dead ball games since 2017. Um, the original one was called Dead Ball Baseball with Dice. Um, I came up with it when I had, at that point, oh, maybe a 10-month-old baby, 9-month-old baby, something like that. And I really wanted something that I could play uh, while I was sitting with him at the dining room table. And a kid that age, um, as you know, if you're a parent, can take forever to eat. And so I was like, <laughs> right. I need something where I can like roll the dice while he's chewing and I can get the result of an at-bat. Um, and at that point, I'd been playing a lot of Call of Cthulhu and other D100 systems. And so I sort of had the D100 in my brain. And it occurred to me that a batting average is a percentile. Um, a D100 gives a percentile result. And I was like, you know, if a guy's got a 270 batting average and you roll a 27 or less, that's a hit. Um, and so I came up with that. I started playing with that at literally at my dining room table in our old apartment. And um, I was playing with it all the time. My wife one day was like, you know, you ought to try to find a way to monetize this because you've got a league here. You've got all these pretend <laughs> players right. and stuff. You really maybe turn this into like a thing. Um, and I had no idea if anybody would ever be interested in it, but um, I put the first one on Kickstarter in 2017. It was a big hit. And since then I've released a host of expansions. Um, last year I put out the second edition, which sort of took the best of the expansions and the original rules and streamlined them and made it a little bit more accessible, I think, and easier for people to pick up. And now this one, Masters of the Game, which I'll be showing again to those of you on the video, um, is uh, the first expansion since the second edition. Um, and what it does is it kind of opens up the simulation a little bit. It gives people who are running leagues an opportunity to simulate their team's finances, uh, which people have wanted for a long time. So you can 
take a small market club and build it up into a big market team, or you could take a big market team and run it into the ground. Um, I think baseball fans enjoy both sides of that journey. Um, it's <laughs> yes. got rules for historical play. So you could play during World War II and you have to have a draft, um, which will, you know, take some of your players away. Some of them might not come back. Some of them might come back, but they're hurt. Um, it's got rules for AstroTurf. It's got, you know, just all that fun baseball history um, kind of squeezed into one book. Um, and in, in addition to that, there's also a fictional league in there called the Southern Circuit, which I've been tracking now for like six seasons. So we've got the new installment of that. Um, there's a little campaign you can play with the Southern Circuit teams called Nine Game Pennant, which I think is a ton of fun. It's one of the main ways that I actually play Dead Ball. Um, and uh, yeah, there's just like a lot of really lovely writing and a lot of passion for the game. And people have been responding to it um, like People seem really, really excited about it. Folks love this game, and it makes me so, so happy to get to keep making it. Um, and it makes me so happy that they love it because it means I get to keep making it because I really like working on these books. They're really fun. Um, I get to find source all this beautiful like art from like 1910s, 1920s, um, and I've just like learned so much about baseball history making these games. It's like a total pleasure to get to keep working on it every year. I think everything you just said is why I'm so attracted to this. In fact, the the funny story I was going to tell you at the top. So I'm not a sports guy. Uh, baseball is one of the sports that I like the game. I just don't like, like go. I, I love to go to the game. I don't love the whole millionaires like, hitting balls or yeah. all that stuff, but the game and you're not going to turn it on and like sit and watch on the couch. Right. But it's a beautiful yeah. game. And when I have experienced it, I really enjoy it. So I'm, I'm on drive through RPG. And up pops dead ball. This was a couple of years ago. And it was, it was the image on the front. And then I started reading about it and I was like, this is exactly the thing that I like. This is hitting all the buttons and the idea of sitting there, like you said, sitting there, rolling the dice, playing your game. I'm like, you can play Yahtzee by yourself or mm -hmm. you can play this by yourself <laughs> or you can play this with a friend just like yeah. you can Yahtzee and it, it's it, I actually think it's like an evolution of of that whole Yahtzee idea which Yahtzee mm -hmm. is one of those kind of perfect games it's like like Tenzi was the evolution of Yahtzee mm -hmm. this falls right in there only now we're playing under these other rules I mm -hmm. love it I love it so much and the the iconography you use you're right the the vintage artwork amazing amazing so, okay, now I've just poured all the love out about this thing. <laughs> Let's get into this Kickstarter. Uh, once again, it's Kickstarter. Look up Dead Ball. When you pull it up, Masters of the Game is the edition that he's Kickstarting right now. Uh, let's see. It goes through June 29th. I guess that's important to say. Mm -hmm. June 29th. So get in there and support it. Now, we've got different tiers on this thing. What are some tiers that you think people will be most interested in? Well, the most popular tier is $12, which gets you a uh, drive through RPG at cost code to buy the book, uh, which will work out to about $5. So you're getting a $20 book for $17 in the end. Um, that's by far the most popular. We've got a lot of returning fans who just come every single time and they grab the book and they get the new book each time that way. Um, for new fans, we've got what's called Dead Ball Complete, which is our $25 tier. Um, and that gets you the PDF of the new book, the at-cost code for the new book, plus those same things for literally every other Dead Ball book, which at this point is about eight total, I think. Um, and that includes the second edition. So if you've never played the game before, Dead Ball Complete is definitely the thing you want um, to like get sort of fill in the Dead Ball backstory, um, as well as get you the cool rules. And of those old books, all you need need is the second edition. So you can get Dead Ball Complete, you get your second edition, you get your new expansion, you can play them both. And then if you're like, hey, this is really cool, I want to learn more about this, you can dig into some of the older expansions, um, which all have their own wacky bonus rules. Um, and I believe Dead Ball Year 3, we have rules for like throwing the World Series. That was in honor of the 1919 Black Sox scandal. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. In Dead Ball Year 2, there's like a franchise generator where you get to like design your own ballpark and stuff like that. Um, so they've all got something and they've also all got um, the fiction of these fictional leagues. They've all got their nine game pennant campaigns. So every one of the expansions brings its own thing. Um, but And if you grab Dead Ball Complete, you'll get all of that. Um, we have higher reward tiers, which have pretty much all sold out. Um because there's an opportunity to like name a player in the book. You can't do that anymore. Unfortunately, those sold out because um, we have sort of a finite number of prospects each time. But that's one of my favorite things about this game is that each year for the fictional league, all the new prospects are named by Kickstarter backers. 
And those guys don't go away after the first year. Um, usually they stick around for a long time. Sometimes maybe they don't catch on. They fade after a couple of years and we don't see them again. But for the most part, um, they stick around. And because I've been doing this for a long time now, it's been really cool to see players who backers named after themselves or a loved one in like 2017 and used to be like young upstart rookies are now like grizzled old veterans. Um, and it's, you know, as in real baseball, the time goes pretty fast. Um, and it's been very cool to like watch that evolve. We have like family trees inside of this fictional league, like the Pruitt family, they back every time. And so there's like several players named Pruitt. Pruitt so they yeah, got, yeah. Like, their own mythology around them. It's, it's really, really cool. And it means a lot to me to know that every one of these players is named after uh, one of our backers or one of their family members. We get a lot of people who are like, you know, my, my great grandfather played minor league ball for a year in the 1910s. Do you think I could name a player after him? And it's like, my God, yes. That's like yeah, please. the sweetest, like most meaningful thing. Of course. You don't happen um, to have a baseball card of him, do you? Because yeah, well, that actually, would be, and then, that's yeah. the other thing is that now, so this year for the first time ever, I'm holding this up to the camera. So those of you who are not um, watching, don't see this, but I'm holding up an adorable little custom baseball card. Yeah, it's so fantastic. Add on rewards. This is brand new this year. I've never done this before. I don't know why I never thought of it because who likes baseball cards? Baseball fans. Right. Um, but so I've just done this this year. And so now as an add on, and there's um, a good number of these left available because I just opened up a second set. Um, you can send me a picture and the name of a player and I'll turn it into a custom baseball card, which will be available as part of like a deck of dead ball cards. So hundreds of people have signed up to buy the deck. Um, over 50 people have signed up to have custom cards made out of themselves. We have about 50 of these remaining as of our conversation right now. Um, and I'm so excited about these because we're going to have the same um, sort of uh, fun, ragged, dead ball family spirit that we have in the Southern Circuit. But now we're going to have it in these like physical um, totems, I guess. So we're going to have and I told people like, listen, the picture does not have to be of you as long as it's public domain or you have the rights to it. It could be a drawing that your kid did. If you don't want to put your kid on the baseball card, I get that. Maybe they like did a doodle of a baseball player. It doesn't necessarily have to be somebody playing baseball. I want to just like really get the spirit of whatever you think this character is and we'll have their name. Um, we got their team name, their position. And then on the back, we've got all the relevant stats. Um, so you can actually use these to play dead ball. You could like deal out a team with these cards and um, be like, all right, I've got a catcher, I got a first baseman, et cetera. It's got all the numbers on it that you need to play. And then you can like jump into it. And I'm excited to keep doing this because we're going to have, we've got series one, which looks like this. This is sort of an old timey, like late fifties, early sixties style. We've got series two, which I just opened up yesterday, which is a little bit more like late sixties space age. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm excited. I, mean, I, I want to keep doing this every year and eventually we'll have like a whole legacy of weird um, dead ball custom baseball cards that people can play with and collect and trade or just, you know, like hang on to. And they feel really good. They are drive through RPGs um, poker cards. So they yeah, have the those are really nice. They're really nice. They I, I've used them um, for the game Iron Sworn and Star Forge. I bought the cards for those and I knew that they were good. But so they feel exactly like a uh, poker card. Um, so if you open up a deck of cards, they feel like that. So they feel sturdy. They're actually sturdier than an old baseball card. Yeah, those are made of apart, like especially the really board. old ones. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, they're they're just going to be gorgeous. I've had so much fun putting these together. I'm re I cannot wait to see what people come up with because whenever I do this, I'm like, this is a lot of fun. But then people start sending in like their ideas for the game, and that's where it really comes al alive. So like I'm putting up a framework here, and then people are going to fill it with I don't know what, and it's going to be so cool. And so I can't wait to fill out all these cards, get my hands on these decks, show them to my kids, play with them. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Hi there, I'm Rob Southgate, and host of this show. This is the trailer for TTRPG Insider, a podcast about, you guessed it, tabletop role-playing games. Actually, it's more specifically about the amazing people that create TTRPGs. Each episode, I'll interview someone who is involved in making the games that we all love to play. You'll hear from world builders, artists, musicians, writers, marketers, people that run the Discord, and really just anyone involved behind the scenes. And this isn't just a promo show talking about how great their games are. I want to hear their stories how they got to where they are, what's their history with gaming, any tips they can give, and hopefully some fun stories about their lives. So let's make this official. Welcome to the TTRPG Insider Podcast.
TTRPG Insider is a celebration of an industry that I love. I started this show so I would have a chance to talk with the people that you might meet at a convention if you're lucky enough. So grab your dice, throw on some headphones, and come with me on this journey. Oh yeah, make sure to subscribe or follow wherever you listen to podcasts to hear our first episode when it drops this week. It's so cool. All right, let's talk stretch goals. Mm. All right, because you're already, you're, you're knocking on the door of 15,000 here. Yes. So you had 5,000 hit that, 10,000 hit that, 15,000 you're about to hit. You got a couple more. Tell us about the stretch goals that are coming up. Yeah, so my um, approach, everything I do when I'm doing a Kickstarter, and this is my 10th Kickstarter, which is kind of crazy to say, uh, I'm, I'm all about not overextending myself. I'm all about not promising more than I can deliver comfortably, um, right. because I don't want to make myself miserable with this. Um, and I also know that just as a creator, as an artist, like once this campaign is done, I'm going to want to be working on something else, because that's right. just how my brain works. Um, and so my thing is I try to get everything as done as possible before the campaign launches. That's why you, you saw the rule book, which is the main product we're selling here, is already done. Um, I'm going to do one more pass on it. The player names will get added in, but it's basically done. It's like 98% right. done. Um, the cards I've already tested. I know that they're going to work. Um, and so everything with the stretch goals is, I think, really cool stuff, but um, all manageable things for me to make. You generally, all things that I've made before. Um, it's not, uh, I'm not giving away custom dice that I have to source. There's not t-shirts that I have to like find a manufacturer for. I don't want and to those all cost that... a lot. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I, I operate on what I call a overhead model. Um, so we just try to keep it down as much as possible. So right. for the stretch goals, the first two stretch goals are fun, lighthearted supplements. Um, one of them is a game I came up with called dead ball cardboard, which is, uh, essentially like a dice rolling game that you can play with actual baseball cards that you have lying around. The second one is the dead ball mindfulness supplement, which is a way to use dice while you're playing the game to sort of remind you to take a deep breath. Or look out like the mindful eating. It's mindful yeah. gaming. I love exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. So and I, I think it. because it's already like a very relaxing game, I think this will just be a fun way for people to play. And like if you're feeling a little bit stressed out, maybe roll on this table a little bit and it'll just remind you to like visualize something nice and just like be calm. <laughs> very zen of you. Um, yes. And uh, you know, everybody always needs to take an extra breath. So I think that'll be a good thing. But then I think the biggest stretch goal is the one we're coming up on right now, the fifteen thousand dollar one, which is this play mat. Um, and in the fall, I released a book called Dead Ball Junior, um, which is uh, a version of Dead Ball, but reworked for kids as little, young as like three or four. So you, like no reading is required. Really, really simplifies it. Everything is just like one D20 roll and that just like moves through the game super fast. And, you know, I have young kids of my own and I was testing with them. And if you show a kid a baseball score sheet. They're not that interested in it. They want something like that looks like a game board. They can move tokens or play. Right, or right. Move things around. around. Sure. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we grownups who game are also big kids. And we also like things where you can move tokens around. And so I designed this play mat for Deadball Jr. that came in three different sizes. And the biggest one was my favorite. Um, it's A0 size, which is the same size that I print sewing patterns on. So it's huge. It's like as big as staples can print. It is literally like wider than my dining room table um and it's got a huge baseball diamond on it it's got all of the like tables that you need it's like three by four feet or something like that yeah, it's huge. very very big right um but you uh you get to you could print it and it costs it costs like 13 dollars to print if you print it in black and white so it's really not expensive um and so for if we hit fifteen thousand, i will rework that for four dead ball rules um everybody who backs the campaign will get it for free because for me it's just a pdf Right. Um, but then you take it to your staples or wherever you can um, print it and then you'll have this gigantic thing. It is quite easily large enough to play on using real baseball cards. Like that's how big it is. Yeah. Um, and that's pretty fun, man, to have it like laid out on the table and you've got like Willie Mays in center field and like Duke Snyder is next to him. And you've got like Johnny Bench behind home plate or whatever. Um, and you can like really see the guys. You can like move it around. It's also a great way to get kids into the game. Deadpool's very popular with parents and children. Um I like to say that if you if if a kid is old enough to understand what a batting average is, um, which I think it's like seven, eight, depending on the kid, they're old enough to enjoy this game. Um, and uh, so it's been I, I've talked to a lot of parents who have like their kids were never interested in baseball, but they got into it through dead ball. Um, and I think the play mat is a way to just like help encourage that. Very cool. 
I got to say, well, this is really exciting stuff. Really Thank cool. You. In fact, you got my brain going now. I'm thinking, oh, wait, we take care of these boys. Or they'll go crazy for this. Great, uh, man. So, yeah, that is absolutely happening in this house. So, once again, anybody listening, go to Kickstarter, look up Deadball, Masters of the Game. It's going to be in the show notes. Uh, but you do want to get in on this. Uh, yep. And if you're watching on video, he's showing you the cover, which is gorgeous. Gotta have it. Gotta have it. Uh, and you can also watch the, the, the video at the front of the Kickstarter. I also found that really cool. So, I mean, you've got just a whole package here. So go and check everything out. Look at all the images, check out the video. Uh, it's a go. There's no risk here. Uh, and will, you've done a good job of making sure that like, Hey, we don't have to wait on t-shirts or anything like that either. Exactly. So. Yeah, the so, book is done. So the you get the the PDF for the rule book that goes out like two weeks after the campaign wraps. So you can start playing this like really soon. It's you're not going to wait around for a year and a half. Plus, if you get in on this, you'll be alerted when the next one hits that you'll want to support, and maybe you can get your name in there as a manager or as a character or whatever. So, mm -hmm. all right, where can people find you outside of Kickstarter where they can interact with you? Um, well, the simplest place is WMAkers.net. Um, that's Acres, A-K-E-R-S. Um, there's also the uh, subreddit, <coughs> excuse me, the subreddit r slash deadball dice, um, which has a link to the deadball discord on there. The deadball discord is very, very active. You come on there. There's I'm on there a lot. People are talking. We talk about baseball. We talk about dead ball. We talk about whatever. Um, really, really great group of people on there who are just like super enthusiastic, very, very welcoming. Um, you can also find me on Twitter, although I'm on Twitter a lot less than I used to be uh, uh, at O U I J U M. Um, so any of those is good. But you can also, if you you know find the Kickstarter campaign, you can send me a message really easily. I'm very responsive and um, very. I'm, the emails that I respond to fastest are the ones about Deadball. People who email me about other stuff think this guy's kind of slow. People who email me about Deadball think, wow, this guy responds in like two minutes because I like to talk about this stuff. It's fun. So I, I sent you an email about Florence Pugh's performance in Little Women. I've been waiting <laughs> and waiting. I'm gonna I'm gonna get to that. I swear. Okay. Now I know. I know this is how you work. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> well, thank you again for coming on. Total and uh, best of luck with this. I invite you back on on the next Kickstarter because I'm sure oh, there's gonna be one. There'll be more. Might be one this year. And also, those of you listening, uh, you know, I have a couple other shows. Uh, I talk about them on here. I have one called TTRPG Insider. Guess who I'm going to invite in as a guest on that? And I have another one called Alley Chats that he doesn't know he's going to get invited to that as well. My so pleasure. Over the course of the next few months, you'll get lots of WA, WM Acres. I'm saying it wrong. That's why I keep ah, saying Will, because right. I knew I'd screw it's it up. It's a lot easier. I always, I, I, this has been my pen name for forever, and I always thought it's funny that WM is like so many more syllables than Will. It's not short, but it's fun. I like it. I think it looks great it looks on the page. Nice. Hard, it's so, a mouthful. Yeah, yeah. All right, Well, thank you again. Thank and you. Uh, best of luck. Thank you. Thanks again, Will, for coming on the show and sharing this great game with us. Deadball is so much fun. I hope you all get in on this. The Deadball campaign ends on June 29th. Follow the link in the show notes so you can support this Kickstarter and get your own copy of this fantastic game. If you or anyone you know has a crowdfunding effort about to launch or currently going, send them our way. We love to share cool projects and to help people reach their goals. You can connect with me through the Go Fund This Podcast Facebook page or via email directly to rob at smgpods.com. You can find a link to this Kickstarter and any other links that we discussed in the show notes. Go Fund This is a production of Southgate Media Group, hosted, edited, and produced by me, Rob Southgate. Thanks again for listening to Go Fund This.